So resuming from Sri Harinam Amrita Vyakaranam. So chapter seven, finally, and that's the Taddhita Prakaranam. <clears throat> Nouns made with the Taddhita suffix. So basically, in Taddhit, we make nouns or modified nouns from a noun itself, right? We take a noun, we add the Taddhita uh, suffixes and we get a new noun. <clears throat> so the pratyas are the so there were four there are four kinds of pratyas in vyakrana as we read in chapter two beginning um prakriti purva pratyay para right and there were four kinds of pratyas mentioned so the pratyas uh they are the four kind of pratyas suffixes in vyakrana so the word Taddhita itself, so the Vigraha of the word Taddhita is Taddhita. Hita is uh, Mangal, Mangalya benefit. And Tad is, so that's Tasmai Hitam, beneficial for him. So literally the meaning is this Taddhita. So in so if someone asks that why it is called Tadhita Pratya, Tadhita, why? not anything else so it's named after one of the uh, one of the pratyas which is used in a certain meaning and that meaning is taddhita <laughs> so taddhita pratyas it's it's just like um actually grammar is really bahulam uh, i mean how to say indefinite we can say because at one point grammar explains concepts like Avyapti dosha. You know Avyapti dosha, right? I do not recall. Avyapti dosha refers to uh, when when an object, a thing, or a person is to be defined, and when we do not, when the definition doesn't completely define it. Mm. That is Avyapti dosha. So that's the Avyapti dosha in that uh, definition. And then there is another concept called Ati Vyapti Dosh, which basically means when there is like exaggeration uh, in in the definition of a certain thing, object, or person. Uh, exaggeration. Uh, so these are all doshas. So now let's say Tadhita Pratya. The chapter is called Tadhita, and it's just based on one of the suffixes pratyas which is used in one of the senses right so i i mean ideally if we see looks like falls under the avyapti dosha category but still the name is tadhita similarly the fourth chapter karaka now karaka only deals with nouns literally uh, and that to the six karakas not even the the possessive one the genitive one but the Karaka Prakaranam also covers uh, the the tenses, I mean the verbs, their usages and all. So, so also again looks like Avyapti. But in any case, grammar is such. So Taddhita is named because of a certain Pratyaya which is used in that sense, which is Taddhita, beneficial for him. <clears throat> Uh, 
अथ तदित कार्याणी सो नाउ वी बिगिन द सेक्शन डीलिंग विद द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टेक प्लेस वेन तदित प्रत्यय इज अप्लाइड संशोधन इन द बृहत वर्जन ऑफ हरिनामृत व्याकरण तदित प्रकरण इज बाय फॉर द लार्जेस्ट चैप्टर इट कंटेन्स अराउंड 1134 सूत्रस व्हिच इज मोर देन 1/3 ऑफ द टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ सूत्रस 3181 सो इन बृहत वी हैव दीस मेनी टोटल सूत्रस एंड आउट ऑफ देम 1134 आर इन द तदित इटसेल्फ हाउएवर मेनी ऑफ द वर्ड्स डेल्ट विद इन द तदित प्रकरणम आर क्वाइट रेयर and so in this version of harinama amrita vyakarana called the madhyama we only included two 32 most important sutras of the prakarana the tadhita prakarana consists of two parts okay so atha tadhita karyani the section dealing with the transformations that take place when the tadhita pratyay follows transformations such as brushnindra govinda deletion and so on and then atha tadhita the section which ordains the tadhita pratyay when they are applied and in which meaning so it's just like like in chapter 2 and 3 we did the transformations the declensions and in chapter 4 we learned their meanings their usages similarly in this chapter the first section here will be dealing with the formations and then the second uh, section will be dealing with their applications and their meanings and the usages so we can write it like the first section is karya vivechana or vivechana discussion on the karya the, the operation and this could be written as let's say artha vivechana discussion or contemplation on the meanings while studying the first section one has to be patient because when examples of the transformations are given there is a constant reference to future tadhita sutras and pratyas and meanings that one has not yet studied for example in the example garga plus nyan in vritti 1042 brishnendra of the first sarveshwara is done uh, of first sarveshwara that's a because the pratyaya is nrsinga and the deletion of the final arama of garga is done by sutra 1050 because the pratyay is also bhagavat this and thus we get gargya gargya but we are not told that the meaning of gargya is a male descendant of garga we have to wait until we study the sec second section to find out when the tadhita pratyay and is applied and in which meaning it is applied only then does the understanding become complete however to say uh, to say it the curiosity of the students in this madhyama version of harinama amrita we included the meanings of all the examples and we also gave detailed uh, step by step formations to show how the final form is made out of these two sections the second is by far the larger and it contains several subsections that deal with uh, feminine pratyas pratyas that are applied at the end of compounds and so on there are also two new names that are introduced in the tadhita prakarana so that's keshava and madhava this comes a lot keshava madhava with the pratyas keshavana madhava you know like that like earlier we had nrsingha prithu nirguna right here we have keshava and madhava new terms if a pratyaya is keshava it is understood to have the indicatory letter t right so keshava is the indicatory letter t which causes the feminine to be made with e instead of ap uh, and and if the pratyaya is madhava it is understood to have both na and t as indicatory letters which respectively cause uh, vrishnindra 
and the feminine to be made with ep so so keshava is having indicated letter as ta any pratyaya which is which is ta having ta as the it so that's keshava and then second is madhava meaning any pratyaya which has uh both na and ta as indicated letters so then vrishnindra happens and eep in the feminine <clears throat> adi sarveshwarasya vrishnindro drisinghe the first sarveshwara of a word takes vrishnindra when a nrsingha pratyaya follows i was discussing this with my guru dev day before yesterday that mostly if you see uh if you take any word like like pritha it becomes parth so the first sarveshwara which is hri rama it it becomes vrishnindra r ridvase r similarly kunti becomes kaunteya these are all examples of tadita so again this u rama becomes au right again vrishnindra so this sutra is very common in tadita adi sarveshwarasya uh, vrishnindro nrsinghe so the first observation of the word takes prashnindra when a nrsingha pratyay follows ah uh, one second please the rules given in this prakarana are only applicable in the case of tadita pratyas so thus we when we have garga and yan we get gargya because yan is a nrsingha pratyay right that we have studied earlier as well so because of na as it indicated letter so here this this a the adi sarveshwara uh becomes vrishnindra because we have a nrsingha pratyay following uh, it will be described later how advaya and idvaya are deleted when a bhagavat pratyay follows what is bhagavat if you remember a krishna sthana sarveshwaro a krishna sthana sarveshwaro bhagavat sangya tadite yascha so bhagavat sangya is a krishna sthana sarveshwara the pratyas which are a krishna sthana beginning with sarveshwara a krishna sthana sarveshwara bhagavat sangya tadhite tu yascha and in tadhita pratyas beginning with y rama they are also bhagavat sangyas so this yan is also bhagavat because it begins with y and it's a tadhita pratyay so so advaya and idvaya they deleted when bhagavat pratyay follows so that will come later so gargya from garga and the meaning is a male descendant of garga so as it was already mentioned that here they will only work on the formations the meanings will be the usages will be disclosed later similarly when we have a uh, daksha and in daksha in then we get dakshi again in is in rasinga pratyay so uh adi sarveshwarasya vrishnindro nrsinghe so dakshi a male descendant of daksha the dhitas are very common again in scriptures in tikas in scriptures very much the dhitas are very common and when we have upagu plus ang sorry an we get au upagava upagava so this 
U becomes takes Vrishnendra, Au, Aupa, and then Gavaha, a male descendant of Upagu. It will be described later how Udvaya at the end of a word uh, takes uh, Govinda. Again, it will be. I was actually reading, there was one word in 10th Canto. And the word was, uh, again, I mean, we'll have to check the formation, but it's not related to this one. Anyhow, we'll discuss that later. Note, the following step-by-step -step formations are made in accordance with the, the methodology given by Jeeva Goswami in Vritti 1106. So, Gargasya Gotram, a male descendant of Garga. This is the meaning. So, Yarn is applied in the sense of Tasya Gotram by Sutra 11.15. So, these are all future sutras. And thus, the word Gotram is left out in accordance with Uktarthanam Aprayogaha. So, the meaning Uktarthanam Aprayoga. So, the words whose meanings are already mm, like visible or understood. So, they are not used. That's why Gotram is removed. So, we get Gargasya and Yarn, this Tasya Gotram meaning. So, we get Garga Yarn. I think uh, this is... Okay, one second. Okay, so again. So Gargasya Yan, we get Garga, this Adi Sarveshwarasya Vrishnindra and Rasinge. And then this Arama is deleted, and the sutra will be disclosed later. So uh, we get Gargya. And then so just they are applied. So Gargya. Similarly, Dakshasya Apatyam, a male descendant of Daksha. So, in is applied in the sense of Tasya Apatyam. Thus, the word Apatyam is left out in accordance with, again, Uktarthanam Aprayogaha. So, Dakshasya in, Daksha in, um, then Adi Sarveshwarasya. Vrishnindro Nrsinghe. And then our Rama is deleted again by future sutra. So we get Dakshi. Again, Upa Gaur Gotram, a male descendant of Upa Gu, is Aupagavaha. Aupagavaha. The word Gargya is formed by applying the Tadhita Pratyaya Madhavaya. See, this Madhavaya comes here. Um, Madhavaya. So, Madhavaya has no root. Oh, actually, Now, Madhava, Keshava, Pratyas, the Pratyas, Keshava, when a Pratyas is Keshava, it is understood to have the indicated letter T. So, it doesn't literally has it, but it is understood. Similarly, for Madhava, it is understood to be having both N and T. Right. Madhava, Keshava and Madhava. So, here, the word Garga is formed by applying the Tadhit Pratyay Madhava year in the sense of Gargasya Gotra Apatyam Puman, a male descendant of Garga by Gargade Madhava Yaha. So, that same Pratyay Madhava Yaha is called Yarn Hair. Na and 
the deletion of advaya and idvaya takes place by a idvaya saharo bhagavati these are all the future sutras we can take note of them a idvaya saharo bhagavati here the first sarveshwara arama takes vrishnendra in the form of arama the word dakshi is formed by applying the tadhita pratyaya nrsingha e in the sense of dakshasya apatyam puman a male descendant of daksha by arama bahahu adibhyam ir nrsingha this ir that same pratyaya nrsingha is called in here Regarding Upagava, when we have the Vigraha Upagataha Upakranto Vagam, we make a Krishna Purusha compound by Ati Adayo Dvitiya and then apply Go Ipa Apa. Thus, we get Upaguhu, which is the name of us, which is the name of some person. The word Upagava is formed by applying the Tadita Pratya Keshava Na. Keshavana. Keshavana was the first one. Keshavana. In the sense of Upagor, Gotra Pratyam Bhuman. By Vidadhe Keshavana again. That same Pratyaya Keshavana is called Anher. The Govinda of the final Urama is accomplished by Udvayasa Govinda Natu and Dhatur Nachastri Pratyaya. So then when we do Sandhi, we get Aupagava. Here the first Sarveshwara Urama takes Vrishnendra. So these are all the further sutras mentioned here. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow. This is uh, this chapter seven is a little different style than the previous chapters. Yes, it's quite uh, precise and detailed. Mm, yes. So that uh, Anvaya. Did you do some shlokas like further? Yes, I did. Uh, <clears throat> Krishna. So, text uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 12. I believe it was text. Uh, I think it was 12. One second. That we should, that we didn't do. Um, oh, yeah, we did 11th also. And... Uh, Okay. The text twelfth. Tataha Sarva Guno Darke Sanu Kula Graho Daye Jagge Vansha Dharha Pandor Bhuya Panduri Vaujasa Tataha Tadanantaram Thereafter. So Sarva Guna Udarke Sarva Gunanam 
उत्तरोत्तर आधिक्य सूचके सानुकूल ग्रह उदये अनुकूल अन्य ग्रह सहिता शुभ ग्रहाण उदय यस्ग्ने ओजसा तेजसा भूय पुनः अभी पांडु इव महाशूर पांडो वंशधर अपत्यम परीक्ष जज्ञ अजायत सो देर आफ्टर सानुकूल ग्रह उदय सो दानुकूल ग्रह उदय मीन्स उदय मीन्स अराइजिंग ओरिजिन नॉट ओरिजिन लाइक हाउ डू से अराइजिंग राइट अराइजिंग ग्रह और जस्ट राइजिंग या जस्ट राइजिंग राइजिंग एंड ग्रह रेफर्स टू द ऑस्पिशियस ग्रह द मंडल द प्लेनेट um and anukul refers to the favorable so the gloss says anukulai anyai grahai sahitanam shubh grahanam udayah yasmin lage lagne lagna means a particular muhurta time period so in a particular lagna in sanskrit lagna let's say lagna means <laughs> so i mean generally lagna refers to this an auspicious moment or time fixed upon as lucky for beginning to perform anything generally people like lagna is considered a good time uh to begin something um yes so like for marriages and all this lagna is quite an important thing um why is it an anyai um oh that yeah, was yeah. so in the time yeah i'm just explaining so yasmin lagne uh in that auspicious time uh when aware shubh grahanam udaya so the, when the auspicious grahas the planets uh they were rising along with sahitanam along with the other favorable planets so anyai anukulai ah. grahi sahita naam you know shubha grahana mudaya yasmin lagne and then there is a vishesha adjective to that i see so the, the planets that are generally unfavorable uh, the planets that are generally inauspicious they were they were in a favorable position so the shubha ones are the uh, ones that are always auspicious is is that what it means uh, i mean anyay doesn't refer to inauspicious anyay means the other uh, fav- uh, anyay means other anukula means favorable graha means planets so along with the other favorable planets or uh, or hmm. along with the other planets which were favorable either way yeah that's that's what i'm saying yeah yeah so Uh, so now furthermore an adjective is given uh, about that lagna so what more about that lagna that certain period of time so it says sarva guna udarke sarva gunanam uttar uttar adhikya suchake so it was denoting uh, expressing uh, yeah suchak for indicating yeah it was indicating uh <clears throat> the sarva gunanam uttar uttar adhikya the adhikya the increasing or increasement you say just the increase 
Adhikya would be the abundance, excess of of all kinds of qualities, auspiciousness. Uttar Uttar means it's just increasing uh, up and up. It's not going down. So it was such a, a lagna, such a period of time which was expressing, showing all the qualities at which point of time all the auspicious graha mandalas, they were appearing. As sutrika is the indication? Yeah, indication. Mm -hmm. So that lagna was indicating the auspicious qualities. So ojasa, tejasa, Bhuyaha punaha api. So again, punaha. Again, Panduhu eva. Just like the great warrior Pandu, Maharaj Pandu, King Pandu. Panduhu vanshadharaha jagge. Ajayata. So just like Maharaj Pandu, another uh, son or another one in the parampara, the lineage of Pandu. Uh, who was Parikshit Maharaj? So he he was born Ajayata. He took his birth. What is apatyam? Apatyam is offspring. Oh, okay. Apatyam. <laughs> Tasya Pritamana Raja Viprai Dhaumya Kripa Dibhi Jatakam Karaya Masa Vache Dhomya Kripadi Bhi, Dhom Kripacharya Pramukhai Viprai Mangalam Punyaham Vachitva, Pathitva, Tasya Parikshitaha Jatakam Jatakarma Karaya Masa Sampadaya Masa. So Maharaj Yudhishthir was very his was very much pleased at heart. Saharsha Chittaha. So he he part itva. He basically uh, he got recited the the mangalam, like the swasti vachanam and all. You know all the Vedic mantras which are chanted when a new baby is born. So he got those mangalam punyaham recited by the brahmanas headed by Dhomya Kripacharya and all. Uh, and then in this way, after, you know, uh, in this way, Pathitva, Parikshitaha Jata Karma Sampadaya Masa. He got the, the Jata Karma of Maharaj Parikshit accomplished. Jata Karma refers to all the, the activities, birth ceremony, it says. Uh, consisting in touching a newly born child's tongue thrice with ghee after appropriate prayers and all. So it's all the rituals which are performed uh, as a birth ceremony. So Maharaj Parikshit got that done. It doesn't say Arjuna because if we see Arjuna uh, was the grandfather, like directly um, of Prakshit Maharaj, because Abhimanyu was the son and then uh, son of Arjuna and then, but Maharaj Yudhishthi did that. Uh, also because Prakshit Maharaj was the only remaining uh, offspring, Apatyam. We can understand. Hiranyam gam mahim graman hastyashvan dripatir varan Pradat Svannam Chavipraya Prajati Vithesati Thavit Tirthavit Dana Kalagnya Sahan Ripatihi 
युधिष्ठिर विप्रेभ्य हिण्यम सुकर्ण गां धेनु महीं पृथ्वी वरां श्रेष्ठा ग्रामा हस्ती अश्वां स्वन्न च शोभन अन्न च प्रजातीर्थे पुत्र उत्पत्ति पुण्य काले सो युधिष्य महाराज हु इज दान कालज्ञ हु नोज द टाइम वेन टू गिव डोनेशन यू नो द राइट टाइम ऑफ डोनेटिंग एंड ऑल सो ही सच युधिष्ठ महाराज पुत्र उत्पत्ति पुण्य काले एट द ऑस्पिशियस टाइम ऑफ द बर्थ ऑफ अ सन अ चाइल्ड ही गेव द दऊ ही गेव वट हिरण्यम गोल्ड ही गेव काउस धेनुम ही गेव महिम पृथ्वी वेल हैव टू सी व्हाट इज महिम पृथ्वी में व्हाट व्हाट इज दैट लैंड Uh, yeah yeah right land and then uh, varan graman the vil- villages uh, elephants hasti ashwan horses then shobhanam annam cha good quality grains to whom unto the brahmanas the vipras viprebhya iti anvaya Shrishtan. Shrishtan is a superior quality, good quality, best. Oh, Shrishtan. I see. So he gave them villages also. Yeah, grama and grama refers to villages. And elephants and horses. <laughs> What would they do with elephants anyway? So, text fifteen. तमुचुर ब्राह्मणस्तुष्टा राजान प्रश्रयान्वितस्वी प्रजात पुरूण पौरवर्षभ दैवेना प्रतिघाते न शुक्ले संस्था मुपेयुषे रातवोनुग्रहाय विष्णुना प्रभ विष्णुना तुष्टा प्रतिग्रह शुक्ले शुद्ध निर्मले अस्मिन् प्रजातंत वंशे अप्रतिघाते न दुर्वारेण दैव संस्था नाशम उपेयूषी गते सती वह युष्माकुग्रहाय प्रभ विष्णुना प्रभव प्रभव नशील प्रभवनशील विष्णुना रात दत्त सो द ब्राह्मणस हु वर सैटिस्फाइड बिकॉज हैविंग रिसीव्ड द डोनेशन एंड ऑल so they spoke kathayamasu to maharaj yudhishthir who was prashrayanatam who was bowing down out of humility respect so hey paura varshapa hey uh, oh one from the dynasty of puru so puru naam shukle shuddhe nirmale asmin वंशे सो इन दिस लिनेज इन दिस प्योर शुद्ध वंश परंपरा द लिनेज ऑफ पुरुष पुरु अप्रति दुर्वारेण दैवेन संस्था उपेयूषी so okay i'll i'll do the anvaya but we'll also check in the vedha base afterwards so in this lineage so durvarena daivena daiva means destiny fate 
and durvara means uh, how to say that something which can't be controlled unsur uh, unsurpassable so due to the unsurpassable fate uh your lineage uh like specifically referring to this last child uh who was in the womb of uttara so nasham gate sati he was almost destroyed killed but yushmakan upon you anugrahartha in order to you know show compassion to you all uh lord vishnu who is capable prabha vishnu na prabha vana shile na so he protected ratah he protected and in this way he gave that child or the, the last hope of this lineage to you all etiyartah so अनुग्रहार्थाय दैट सीम्स टू बी इन द डेटिव केस बट आई डोंट सी व्हाई द डेटिव यस या बिकॉज़ वह अनुग्रह अनुग्रहार्थाय ओ सो इट्स फॉर योर फॉर द सेक ऑफ योर कंपैशन और अनुग्रह सो बेसिकली ओ फॉर द सेक ऑफ ब्लाइंड ओके आई सी या सो for the sake of the brahmana said this spotless and has been restored by the all powerful and all pervasive lord vishnu uh, the personality of god in order to oblige you he was saved when he was doomed to be destroyed by an irresistible supernatural power or weapon so the same thing yeah Okay, I think you did that much only, right? Yes, yes, that's that's. Uh, okay, so we'll resume. Try to resume tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So the thing is that this time, so so now it is, uh, twelve eleven p.m. here, and okay. the temple program starts at eleven p.m. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, at eleven a.m. So it it would have so tomorrow, it would have started one hour ago. Or more than one hour ago, and I I would have to go there. So if you're not um, if you're able to um, so I think that's like like it's um. What about my seven thirty p.m.? Yes, seven thirty p.m. should work. So if if you do, if you do by seven thirty p.m., then then I should be able to be here for a short time. Okay. Uh. Seven seven thirty seven thirty p.m. would be so tomorrow seven thirty p.m. Well, yes, sure. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm in Columbus right now, so. Oh, okay, so, Mataji. So here's the temple program is at this time. Oh, okay, Mataji. All right, thank you. 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 Thank you.